and dumped them into the banks and all of a sudden they were in debt. Now credit rating agencies and folks on the right are saying, you guys are in so much debt, we're going to downgrade that debt, made it more expensive to spend, and you've got to slash all your social programs and oh, hurt the people in order to get back on your feet. That's not what got us out of the Great Depression, if you do your homework and read the book by Roosevelt. A book about Europe? you got to read the paper. It's happening right in front of our face. All right. I know, but I'm not going to read the globe about it because they're, they're just giving, they're, they're just giving hey, us the law. Hey, there's information to be to come out of every single uh, uh, every single thing, and I encourage you to take a look at the Triple Crisis blog, www.triplecrisis.com. Oh, Triple Crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me take a couple and then we'll, we'll talk. Uh, hey, if the, if the lobbies and corporations and banks are the ones that are really paying our politicians' salaries and not the taxpayers, when he pays a small fraction of what these politicians are making, Jackie, 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 really expect Jackie, Jackie, to get the laws changed. Right, let me take a couple. So how do we get the laws changed if, uh, if, we, if we feel that a lot of the politicians are in the package of uh, moneyed interest? Get in the streets. about the glass area. What'd you say? Could you digress a little about the glass hernia? The glass eagle act? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll let yes. Mark with you. Hey, everybody. We just got a, uh, a big shipment of ice, a couple bags of ice. If anybody has a cooler and they want to grab some of that and keep some stuff cold, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but go to logistics and ask if you need some of that. Okay? One more question, and then I'll answer all of you. Uh, so you said earlier that uh, uh, glass eagle was first selected that if you want a, a credit report on a bond issue or something like that, you would, you would pay for these. And at some point that changed. When did that change and how did that change and why did that change? Because I know that happened somewhere, but I don't know. Sure, so uh, a couple, a couple of questions. Um, one, well, gosh, what are we supposed to do if our politicians don't listen to us because the one percent is paying for their uh, paying for their campaigns? You folks are doing it. We're doing it right now, right? We're having a conversation about it. I think uh, I think the Obama administration thought that he had us all, um, and uh, we did. Or at least he had he had me. But uh, they say that it's going to cost two point two billion dollars for the next president to win. The uh, the the, the two point two point two billion dollars will be the cost of the next election. Unfortunately, we don't have the money for it, and if we did have the money for it, we'd be spending it on these trains. So he's had to go to them, and he's been warped by them. And now I've actually liked what the guy's been saying over the past couple of weeks, and he's been saying a lot of it because of people like us, right? You folks are out here. There's 14 million people without a job. He knows he can't ignore us because we are going to vote, and we vote, and that's a really important thing to do. And so this is this is all we can do unless there's some billionaires out there who we'll, uh, we'll talk. Uh, questions? Uh, I want to know how uh, Keynes uh, answers uh, for in the 1930s uh, failure, how they apply today given that we've already started uh, in the hole from simply funding uh, an elite in the U.S. with huge amounts of money so that we're already in debt. And so how do we, increasing the debt, you know, how can that work now? And will, and will that process, if worked out today, because I don't see any other way, will that process then bring in uh, a, um, a money system that's not going to be the dollar and bring down the U.S. as, you know, a major 
colonialist power. Sure. What, what's your name? Rita. Rita asks, uh, uh, this guy John Maynard Keynes, you've heard of him? Yeah. Uh, she says, well, how, how, how do we explain some sort of a Keynesian alternative to this austerity, given the fact that we have so much debt here in the United States? And that's a really, really important question. Yeah. All right. The way, what Keynes said is that we should be counter-cyclical. During good times, like from 2003 to 2007, we should have had a huge budget surplus, right? The economy was growing, you have a tax system in place, you're pulling the money, you're pulling money in and saving it for a rainy day. And when the rainy day comes and it's pouring, that's when you're supposed to stimulate the economy to get things going back, right? That's the, that's the Keynesian counter-cyclical argument. Greta? Right. Rita. Greta's question, Greta's question is, well, what do we do because we're in huge debt? That's absolutely right. We we in, in we inherited a massive debt from the Bush administration, right? In the year 2000, after September 11th, the Bush administration took a surplus that the Clinton administration had. We had a budget surplus in the United States, and he spent all the money on the Iraq War that no other country would fund, and he gave a huge tax break to the one percent. Okay, during the biggest boom that we've had in a couple decades. That left us bankrupt. So Obama walked in, he was handed a financial crisis, he was handed a massive debt, and he was handed this big, huge bailout of Wall Street. So Greta's question is real. So what do you do? Gosh, do you spend, do you go into more debt to get out of the debt you have? And the answer is yes. Why? Because if we don't go into debt to get out of the current debt that we have right now, we won't grow. And if we don't grow, especially without a revenue stream in place, we are never going to be able to pay back the debts. And the dark scenario is more likely in that case than if we get people working again, get people in their homes again, get people spending money again, get the economy growing again, then there's a tax base to, be, to pay back our debts. Also, debt is cheaper now than it's ever been, and I'll argue, thanks to these guys, right? The... Ben Bernanke is actually one of the only Keynesians in the United States of America right now. I know a lot of people uh, associated with the movement are starting to say down with the Fed and so forth. I actually think that Ben Bernanke in the past few months has been better than Larry Summers ever was, better than Timothy Geithner ever was. All right. He's got interest rates really, really low, and he's also have, has policies um, to try to get the long-term interest rates really, really low. All right. That makes borrowing cheap. Okay, if we crash down and the economy goes out of whack and there's okay. massive inflation, borrowing is going to cost 15%, 14%. It's going to be even harder to get out of. Uh, you can't stand, no, you can't stand still on the sidewalk. We're going to start um, being an encumbrance and getting moved right. on and stuff. So the suggestion that we want to continue yes. the conversation, we move over to the wall. So yes. okay. let's do that. Yeah, I think I'm going to be right there. Hey, I'm